This is the astonishing story of a domestication project for edible caterpillars in Kilueka, Congo Central, just under the equator. The director of this program, Augusta Konda, was born here in 1953. When he was a boy, there were a lot of trees here and shrubs, a good habitat for the caterpillars that were abundant. Today, practically nothing of the vegetation is left. The caterpillars are lost. The landscape is burnt. Practically no tree here because of the charcoal production for the big agglomeration of Kinshasa. Augusta Konda shows some of the trees that were part of the original vegetation and important for the plants, for the caterpillars that were eaten here. Yes, 30 to 40 percent of the protein intake of the population here used to come from edible insects. Today only some fruit trees are left and only few caterpillars are found. So that's why Augusta Kondo and his team tries to reforest the landscape with the photo plant of these caterpillars and tries to reintroduce the caterpillars that were brought from far away, 400 kilometers to the east from Bandundu province, where some of the caterpillars still are abundant. The project site is around three hectares big on a hill surveying the valley of the Inkisi River and you see traces of the caterpillars here on this twig of Burkea Africana. Now today is the day to check how the caterpillars grow. And they are here in big masses. It's interesting to see that on this isolated shrubs of Burkea of Ricano a lot of these small caterpillars of Sirena forda can be found. This is the special caterpillar species that people would like to have again here. Here we see the L1 stage little caterpillars on the twig of Burkea africana. They just hatched from these clusters of eggs that were imported from Bandundu province and fixed to fresh shrubs of Burkea Africana. They seem to have hatched very well and the question is more what happens if the Burkea shrubs are eaten up. Will they be able to find new plants in the neighborhood? Will they be able to produce chrysalids, pupas, to emerge as adults and build up sustainable populations here? These are some of the questions of this project. The Irina Foda is quite an interesting species because they seem to grow very well also in these savannas uh, where they have to migrate from one shrub to another through the savanna. I mean this is a very dangerous life for the caterpillar.
mostly they are eaten in the final stage, in the uh, L5 stage, when they are around 8 centimeters long, they are dried. And on the market you can still find them, but not from here, but uh, brought to here from other provinces, from the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's a fine work they perform here, and it's a unique project in the world. It's the first step to try to domesticate caterpillars of edible insects that only have been eaten from wild-caught species. Nobody knows exactly whether we can uh, breed and rear them here, whether they can be used for an agricultural production. So that's the pioneer character of this project with Sirino Forda. Sometimes the little burkeo shrub, they are hidden between the grass, but also here if you go closer, you can see the caterpillars eating on the leaves. The two boys here showing us the caterpillars are here for guarding the plantation and for guarding the insects against birds or people who want to collect them. So if this project is successful, it can be a model for other African countries where also these kind of caterpillars are a delicacy and an important source of the protein intake of the population. So as we walk along the planted burkeo shrubs, sometimes you see the way how they migrate from one shrub to another. They actually climb down the stem of the plant and walk in the middle of the day through the savanna to another shrub. That is something that I have never seen before, because mostly caterpillars, they eat in the night or they move in the night, but not with Sirina Forta. They seem to be brave enough to walk around during the daylight. And we even can watch them climb down to change the plant. <laughs> also later when they are on their last caterpillar stage, they climb down to dig in the soil for pupation. Sirina Foda is also kind of a, a silk moss that has no silk. It's just pupating in a very strong pupa in the dry ground next to the fodder plants. And there it will stay for about six months in the shape of a pupa and emerge then again as an adult. So that's also one of the problems uh, with the breeding and rearing of this species. It's a univoltine species. It means that it has only one generation per year. And we have to find out whether we can artificially wake up the pupas from this long sleep and probably build two or three generations a year with Sirino Forda. Something that is not known in nature where naturally the life cycle is synchronized with the 
change of the weather and the seasons from dry to wet. Other species of edible caterpillars, of course, they are polyphake. They eat a lot of different uh, plants and have more than one generation. Interesting how they move when they are disturbed. So this is now a little bit away from the first place, a new reforestation where the agronomes replanted a stripe of four or five meter wide with fodder plants of caterpillars to see whether this was a place to bring in new caterpillars to also start new populations here. But it's difficult to grow the plant. When you cut down a tree or a forest in a tropical region, that is done in a minute. But to rebuild the soil that can last for decades, and sometimes if you don't do it actively, you will not be able to rebuild a rich humus structure for the easy replanting of trees. So also this will be a discussion, what do we do with the soil that is eroded and has practically no humus content? How can plants grow here and how can you bring back the forest that once was here? This is a small greenhouse originally made two years ago for the first experiments with Serena Forta when they tried to put the caterpillars uh, in, on these small shrubs under the netting and tried to reproduce them here, but they disappeared and uh, nobody knows where the pupas were and if they have managed to survive here. So this is not a research project, it's really meant to bring back food that is a delicacy and is traditional here back for the population, also that people can stay on their land, find enough food and their livelihood, because mostly today people have gone away to the big cities. Mm -hmm.